All right. Oh, there's a mic. Hi. Okay. Welcome to Arts iPad and uh, Music <laughs> Integration. Um, uh, I'm Daniel Rizak, out here in Northbrook, District 30. And I am here with a bunch of awesome educators here in the uh, north of Chicago. And, and we have invited and put this kind of together. It's, uh, we've invited some very special guests, uh, a very special guest uh, out here in Chicago by the name of Carol Brose. Hi, Carol. Hi there. I'm I'm here from Chicago. I'm a retired music teacher. Um, I I say music because I, now we're blending the arts so much. You know, art teachers have to do music. Music teachers have to do art. So uh, I was just saying before this that I've actually draw. I'm really into drawing right now. I, I'm doing more drawing than I am music right now because we have to blur the lines. So I'm excited to hear what you guys are doing, and um, so let's go on with it. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. one of the reasons we put this together is we have some new, we have teachers who are new to iPads, and we've been kind of building this up. We're doing a one-to-one -one here mm -hmm. in Northbrook. Um, and we have, a, we have an art teacher, we have two music teachers, we have a technology teacher, and you know, we're all trying to get ideas as to where to start with iPads and music and iPads and art. And, um, and so we thought we'd put it out there and see, and it seems like we have like 30 people that are registered mm -hmm. to come to this event. We'll actually see you know, how many we actually get, but they are free to ask questions uh, in the uh, question and answer. Uh, throughout, if they have any questions for you or for us or whatnot, um, but um, but we're we're basically new. We've been playing around with uh, with our iPads a little bit. But why don't we introduce these folks? Uh, why don't we give them a chance to introduce who they are? Starting with you. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Green, and I'm the Tech Integration Specialist in the district. I'm Dawn Nettlehorse, and I'm the art teacher here. Dawn Nettlehorse. I'm Renee Yu, and I teach orchestra. Renee Yu. That's my panic. I teach general music and choir. That's my panic. <laughs> Michelle King Mulhill. I'm the applied tech teacher. Michelle King Mulhill. All right. Welcome. Um, so here's the thing. Um, what I want to do is just ask you guys uh, first, kind of like we talked a little bit about before, about um, um, kind of you know you you're being thrust into this a little bit. So how are you feeling about things uh, with iPads and? And kind of, what have you heard? And um, um, what are your what are your what are your big ideas? What are your thoughts on, on uh, this so far? Well, I myself, you know, had not used an iPad until last spring, and um, and since then, over the summer, I've been doing a lot of research, trying to um, find different apps and, and what might work for kids in terms of drawing and painting. And, um, I've learned a lot of stuff, but I'm still trying to figure out how to integrate some of that into um, my classroom. Um, and the kids seem very excited about it. Um, but I'm not sure of their ability levels and certain things. And, you know, they're clearly more familiar with the iPad than I am. Sure. Um, so they can help me. But um, with this Procreate um, app that I, I got, I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to you know, working with them on that and then um, looking for more. At, so perhaps I can do a whole quarter of, of digital arts at some point with enough information. Okay. Um, so there's a there's a certain one of the things you talked about too is she she wants to uh, she mm -hmm. wants to know how to sustain sustain iPad use beyond Procreate, which everyone mm -hmm. keeps telling us get Procreate, get these like, great uh -huh, art, uh -huh. art apps. Um, but how can we make this something that, that is you know something we can do um, mm -hmm. like the whole year round uh, mm -hmm. beyond that. Um, so why don't we go to Renee and you? I know we're going to be good, like doing art music, but why don't we throw uh, uh, Renee? What, what are your thoughts? Uh, and uh, she's tell us who you are and like what do you do? Um, I teach orchestra. Okay. And this is my first year, and um, I'm just trying to find ways that um, to really maximize my instruction to the kids and you know continue to engage them. And I heard great things about smart music. I don't know a whole lot of mm -hmm. smart music, but I think one of the nice things that I was thinking about was, you know, the old-fashioned way would be give them a practice log um, to tell them to practice X amount of hours. And, 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 you know, when they come back and we have our weekly lessons or rehearsal, it gives you a pretty good idea. But I think to hold them more accountable and to keep up with their um, lifestyle, mm -hmm. and they can actually give me their best take and kind of hold them accountable that way, 
and also maybe when I have performance exams or whatnot, it saves time and I can assign more and they can just send me um, their take that, that way so I can really use the rehearsal time and the lesson time to go over more music. So, and, and some kids, I realize, do well under pressure and some kids don't. So I think um, if they have the luxury of recording themselves at home, they can give me their best taking feel good about their work and not, you know, have the extra stress or pressure of being able to perform right there and there in front of their peers or, you know, so everybody else wants to play. So, and besides, I think I may still use the CRA system to, you know, um, let them hear some of the music that we're working on. But I think it's just very convenient on my, you know, uh, teaching point of view where if I can have those things and, you know, just click the click right. buttons and right there. It's, and to record rehearsal. Sorry, I think I'm talking too much. But no, that's okay. <laughs> no, it's no, a good no, place. Exactly. Take it notes. Well, before we build the list too long, why don't we go back to uh, Dawn and kind of get started there. Um, what are your thoughts, uh, Carol? Yes, I heard that. I saw that. Uh, what are your thoughts at this point for, for an art teacher who wants sustainable um, activity in, in the classroom? Well, I think the secret when you start out with iPads or any type of technology is, especially teachers of the arts, we want to jump in right away. And you should start with one grade level. So that if you're going to start with iPads and do it with all your classes, you're going to have a real meltdown. Because if something doesn't go well, all your lessons have gone. So if you just do one class, I, I traditionally started with fourth or fifth grade because um, you can still control them. <laughs> and they can, they can do a lot of stuff. And then from there, if those projects went well, then I would punch it out to the eighth graders or down to the second graders. So um, that's sort of how I, I started out with my tech. Um, ironically, you know, Procreate isn't my number one app for art. I got three other apps that I think just knock the socks off. Uh, one is Do Doink or Doink, where the kids can draw. <laughs> and do you know what I'm talking about? The Doink app? Oh, I just love it. Um, it's free. And the kids can then see what they've drawn, and they make little, like, the animation. And um, it's fabulous. The other one that I love is brushes. Um, I think this one costs, though. Brushes keystrokes every single thing you do. And you can send that keystroke then to yourself or whatever. And the kids can then take it and put it into an iMovie. So it's another little animation thing. And finally, Sketchbook X is the one that I have been like totally hooked on. I've been drawing pictures of myself. I mean, isn't it all about me? <laughs> you know? Um, I, I'm serious. I must have eight drawings of myself. I mean, you know, it's just the Google Earth thing, you know. The first time you see Google Earth, you got to go to your house. Yeah. So, um, and that. And, of course, then um, the Garage Band and iMovie. But I think the possibilities are just amazing. And my biggest thing that I want to tell all of the arts people is, I wrote this down, you know, remember your art form. Don't lose that. If you're a performing arts teacher, don't keep your kids in the iPad. Make sure they perform still. I mean, this is supposed to help you, not hinder. So I, I think that's one of my keys. I, you know, when you say, how does an orchestra director use an iPad? Well, it's going to be more for personal use. It's going to be more for, like you said, smart music and recording kids what they're doing and stuff. It may not be an instrument in your classroom. It's You already have instruments. The kids are playing them. So... Um, I, I'm I'm really into transliteracy. I've, I'm you know I, I love the idea of putting art, and music, and theater and all of that together. And I've done I, I'll send you the link out that I can actually I can put it in the chat. Um, I've done a couple of transliteracy things where art and, and music are all together. And uh, here's my link. And um, so you can see, and I sh I have the actual apps that I use to create these all on the iPad. I wanted to be clear that they're all on the iPad. There one was a Sibelius file, so it's a little cheating. But, um, you know, so the two things I just have for everyone is that you start small, you start with one project, you do it with one class, and you see how it works. Because if you bring all of them in and you have 30 going at the same time, also have the kids work in groups at first. first. Don't have yeah. all of them working, working at the same, at the same time. Because you'll be you running around, around trying to make sure everything's, sure everything's working. working. And you and can easily you have, have these, these, these on these separate, separate things. So... so. Any, Any questions, questions from you guys? No, no, that's not great advice, though. Um, um, I, think I think one, one more thing. I'm getting some feedback. Um, um, one, one big thing, thing is in the settings. settings. You got to make sure the kid that the 
that, that the students can't delete apps. Because what happens if you have a class of them, and then you have like another fourth grade class come in after the next fourth grade, and the kid sees a jingle and they delete it, you're going to have to go in, hook it up again, and try to download the app again. So I, that's one of my little advices that I, I of course, learned in my classroom. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, like I said, I, I passed out the iPads and passed them back in. We practiced passing them in and out, practiced where we sit before we even did them. Very much like the orchestra director does. I mean, the first day, you don't just play your instrument. You learn how to put it together. You learn how it all fits. I mean, if you take that concept, okay, this is an instrument. We're going to learn how to use it and take that same philosophy. How do you sit? How do you do? How do you put it together? How, is, how does you put it back? Um, because it's proprietary. You know, if you have number one, all of your stuff is on number one. Am I right, Daniel? Right? Yeah. So you got kids have to remember. So that's why um, the art teacher, one of the things that um, I had my students do is we numbered all of them, and so every kid, like number one, he made his own drawing for number one. So when he opened up his iPad, you know right away that that was number one because the drawing was number one, and it was iPad number one. So the kids created the numbers on each of the iPads. That's so. a great idea. Um, we're fortunate enough to have one-to-one, -one, so each student oh. has their own iPad. Okay, well then their name's on it. Yeah, so it, their picture is on the front. Right. <laughs> First thing they do is do, you know they're doing the portrait thing, aren't they? Yeah. So what do you use for portrait? Do they just hand draw? Do they just freehand it or? No, on their lock screen is they just take a a selfie of themselves. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's so. a good strategy too, though. You know, like that way you can just would pick up the iPad, see who the kid is, if they happen to drop it or lose it or whatnot. Right. Well, then, if they already have a selfie, then they can easily use the sketchbook thing, and they can trace their picture of themselves, and then draw, you know, make a picture of themselves with the um, the picture that they've already done the selfie with. That's a great little start, you know, um, little things like that. So, uh, it, you know, and I think the biggest issue is you got to have headsets too. I think you all you all have headsets, right? No. 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 Okay, so when they're creating all their band music and stuff, you're going to have every single kid, you're going to hear all those sounds? Well, when right. I do composition with GarageBand, they all have headphones. That's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, the music we do, yeah. They have headphones, okay. but not like okay. making headsets. Like. No, okay, I don't mean this. I meant, I meant the headphones. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, because, you know, it, it's, it's hard when you get a little ADHD kid in there. You know, what they hear everything. And they, uh, they can't. They can't focus on their own music. They're listening to everyone else's. One so, of the things um, that I think people kind of forget about. And maybe you can t say something about this too. Is like um, creating original art is cool. But what about what about the artwork that kids have already done? Um, mm -hmm. How can they incorporate that into onto the iPad? Well, of course, they take a picture of it. But you know. Um, I mean, Trish has done a lot of stuff. Flugestad, I mean, her stuff, if you see her, um, she has all art lessons up there. She, I'm, I'm serious. She has 30 different art lessons with the iPad. And they, they, they do their original art, and they also do a lot of art on the iPad. So um, I think, and that's, I, I want to talk about that. I think it's two different things. Um, there's creating music which means you actually are playing the instrument on the iPad, and then there's taking the music and writing your own. Understand this, it's sort of different. Yeah. One is I call creating music and one is composing music. And those are two separate things. Um, I think another thing that I've always talked with my kids in my class was the difference between consuming and creating. Um, you have to hit that right on because if you don't, your gamers are going to just be only playing and not really creating. You understand the difference? They'll just play, 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 play and not realize that there's a you know, um, actually, I did a one-day project on Halloween. You know how Halloween's one of those dreadful days that you are already, you know, gearing up for. Um, I did a slide video uh, where the kids took the. It was actually iPod Touches, and they had to create little songs. They had one sentence. We already wrote the five. It was five sentences about a little. And I'll actually put the link up there. The five second sentences, and they each group had to come up with a sound effect for that sentence. So they had their little thing, and they had to come up with a sound effect. And then I had also in that group, they had to draw something. So we had a little, we had a little drawing. And then we, I videotaped the whole thing, and they used the little sounds effects as their background music for each of the sentences. So that was more like creating music.
They didn't really compose. They created sounds. Because if they can't create sounds to sentences, they're going to have a really hard time composing music. Um, so we, have a, it, we have a listener who wants to know if there's a place where we can access those lessons Yes, that you're talking and, about. Yes, yes, yes. And I have to, I have to, I will, I'll put Trisha's, first Trisha's thing is just amazing. So I'll do Trisha's first. Amazing um, stuff up there. Right. She, uh, she has, her, it's a Dryden Art Weebly site. So I'll put that, you know what, I will do the creating, I'll take you right to the link. That way you don't have to look for it. So yeah. on that. Are you going to put that yeah. in the event? Yep, I got that right there. That's that's her. That should be her. Did I see the? Did I put that in there? Am I am I I am in right? She's in the chat. Uh, I'm in the chat. Okay, so we're, tell me where I need to go. It's all right. <coughs> I see that. Okay. I'm doing a couple different things here. Okay, well, aren't we all? We will make it available after the show. How does that sound? Yes, that would be better because I I that's, that's fine. I do have um. Yeah, it might be on the I compose, I can play. So um, the things. No, I'm gonna have to look for it. Sorry, <laughs> but I, I'll put that up there because you can see some of the some of the work. I no think problem. another thing too is um, 30 second songs um, for a lot of reasons. First, because of copyright. Second, every you can have every single kid present theirs in one day. And third, when you tell a student that they only have 30 seconds to, to either compose or write or play, they flip out because it is just such a short period of time. And so they have to edit. And isn't that what the arts are all about, editing? I think, you know, when I have kids compose, <laughs> they're like, dee -dee 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 and they go pages and pages and pages, <laughs> dee -dee 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 -dee, all the quarter notes yeah. and all over the place. And so when you tell them, no, you only can do one measure, and you only and you limit them and limit them and limit them, their music becomes just beautiful. It really is amazing. So um, 30 seconds, and I usually would have by the time they were writing their songs and telling their story, um, they come to me and say, I just can't put my name in it. I can't put my name in it. I I don't only have 30 seconds, and there's so much I have to say. And when you know a junior high kid or an eighth grader decides not to put their name on a project, you know you've hooked them. Because the most important thing in their life is their name, and so they don't they, their name's not on the project while it's going on. It's they're, they're they're more about their story. So if you make them go right to thirty seconds, you say this is it. This is all you've got. You know, it's all it's uh, like a public service announcement, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it, it it really is, uh, and it, it takes a long time to do thirty. If you only had thirty seconds to tell a story, I mean, it's uh, it's difficult. Do you um and this is just really, you've been using GarageBand a little bit like what um if you couldn't use GarageBand what would you use <laughs> uh, to create music on the iPad? Okay, I knew this was going to be a question because <laughs> I just I just put together a whole page of free apps because I had someone come to me and say I want some free apps. Okay, there's a couple of free apps and I'll give you all the links to this. Actually, I have this is the one I just put together. Um, there's Beatwave that's sort of cool. So what happens is put a uh, Beatwave and it sort of comes across like this. So that's neat. The kids will spell out their letters of their name. So everyone sounds a little bit different. Um, there's Soundbrush where you can take a thing and you can Soundbrush it. And there's Color Sound and Drop It To Me. Um, you know, and don't underestimate recording ones. You know, the orchestra director, you can record some of your rehearsals and stuff with either SoundCloud or Audioboo. I would choose which one you want to use. And what's so fabulous with both of these apps is that if you set up the app ahead of time on your iPad, you can record. It immediately will go right to the cloud. So you don't have to plug it in, try to upload, try to go. It immediately will go right to the cloud, and you can have it all set up. So parents can hear the rehearsal. They can hear everything right right away. So um, I would, I think SoundCloud is. What's wrong? I don't know if I like that. <laughs> well, of course you get to record a couple of times until it's good. <laughs> That's okay. You know. um, the other one that I love is Chord Bank. And that's free, and that's just chords. So you could have kids, you know, playing chords and then singing little songs, and then have another kid, you know, on SoundCloud recording all that. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then I have Dig a Drummer. you got to have a drum one. And Icon Xylo is for the little ones. It's a little xylophone that you can play. And Table Drum. And then, of course, you got to have Mini Piano, which is like a little piano. And these are all free. So, you know, if the kids are taking them home, they can practice. They can get, okay, this is what you got to do. you got to do this and this and this. And when you come back, you got to show me your song. You know? So, I mean, you, you want to make sure that you're doing music. And I get really nuts when people do, like, you know, slideshows and stuff like that about the composer and artist because yes we want to still do that but we don't want that the main focus because we want the kids to create and compose music and that not so much like do reports that's just my I'm sorry if anyone's doing reports but I just yeah. I really want them to be able to use that I mean if they're gonna do reports then just don't use the iPad right. so um, uh, more, anyone else? yeah go on no, I'm sorry did you have a question no. um, Oh, yeah, are there any apps maybe that focus a little bit with, um, there used to be great CD-ROMs years ago on, based on maybe Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, or are there any oh. music appreciation apps or anything? You like know that? what? On Facebook this morning, I didn't have time. There's apparently a new app that's called Beethoven's Ninth. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's, it's someone just put it together. Now, some of these apps that they do that are like that are very expensive. Oh, okay. There's, I think there's an orchestra app, and, you know, I think it might be like, you know, $10. I and mean, they're very expensive. Um, so, and so that that's sort of limiting because, you know, we're all on a budget, and we want to make sure that we're, you know. On one app that I absolutely love, and I've used it for four years, and I still consider it my number one app. It's called Band. It has five instruments in it. Uh, five, six. six instruments. One is uh, the person, cl person clapping. I don't count that one. But what's really neat about it is it has a piano in there. It has a drum in there. It has. It's hard to find, so I'll make sure it's like $3 or something. Um, but it. what's really cool is that you can play a lot of really cool, cool stuff with it. And it has like a little, it's got a rhythm and blues thing, um, more jazzy. And so the kids like love it. And I'm going to try to get it up right now. You can see it's called Band. Can you see? It's probably backwards, right? No, it's good. No? It's good. Okay. But um, and see. So you got that thing playing. And then the next one is and the next one is like a bass is the bass. But th and then a little piano. And they all have recording in it. So the kids can practice, practice, practice and record the best one they like. And this one is the whole reason why. If I can do both hands, it's going to be hard. <laughs> So it has like the one four five chord. It has the one four five chord, and then it has all the little buttons right there. Oh, nice! It's, it's a very cool app. My kids love this one. And then, of course, at the end, <laughs> it's all about me. Audience. So, um, yeah, these are all like I said. These are playing and creating apps. And here again, you want the kids just doing something. You got to have a purpose. You got to say, okay, the reason why you're going to play with this is so that we're going to record with it, so we're going to produce something. If you just have the kids go and play, you're not really putting any, you know, uh, parameters gonna, on it. I'm going to throw a question up here, and this is actually one. Uh, there's a question from Larry. Hey, Larry, how are you? Uh, he wants to know how do you use your iPad and other iOS devices to help other teachers see and understand how music and other arts are important especially when students are so, so tech savvy. However, I'm also curious about how to use the iPad to connect with students, not just creating music and art, but what happens when they go home? How do you, sh where, how do you use the, you know, can the iPad be helpful to share music with each other um, as well? You got to ask them or you want to ask me? No, it's kind of actually for you. I'm gonna throw it okay, okay, okay. Well, there I go back to the whole SoundCloud thing. Um, SoundCloud, I am in love with. I think it's an amazing app. You can put your stuff up there, and what's so neat about the um, desktop version is kids can comment along the whole thread of the, the whole sound wave. So you have the whole sound wave. I'm going to go this way. The whole sound wave, and then anywhere along the way, people can come, ooh, I like this one section right here, or I like this one section there. Um, I don't know if anyone here knows Eric Whitaker. Raise your hands if you know Eric Whitaker. 
Okay. Eric Whitaker had the virtual choir. I think it's of 4,000 people. It was all YouTube, all YouTube videos, 4,000 people. If you have not seen it, your kids will be blown away. It's He's done four of them. Are they amazing? Right, Dan? Is it amazing? Yeah. And his TED Talk is really awesome, too. Like, amazing. Uh, it, 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 you, you could... To, to, if you want kids in choir, show the TED Talk, the very first one, when he says the first yeah. time he was in choir, he, when he heard the choir and they were singing a Bach Requiem and he couldn't read music, when he heard the choir for the first time, he went from seeing in black and white to color. When he says that, you just like Good. get chills. So he is up on SoundCloud. You can comment on Eric Whitaker's new stuff. Okay, how cool is that? I mean... I just think that's what the technology can do now is that you can connect with people that you never even thought. I mean, you can connect with Eric Whitaker on his new stuff. I mean, I just like I said, I think that's that's the power of all of this is the share tool. Sure. Is being able to get your stuff. And a lot of my students have rock bands. They put all their stuff up there too for people to hear their songs before they put them out. Well, what are the best like sharing tools? I mean, there's we have email. Uh, there's uh, you know, there's platforms for sharing as well. I know, um, and we're in middle school, so we're not uh, we're not on you know we're not using Facebook yet or anything like that in, in education. No. Um, do you have one that you like or that you recommend? Well, um, I was into Enmodo for a while, and I tried to use Schoology, but is Schoology or Schoology? I don't know. People use different names. I'm still sort of Edmodo. Um, you know, uh, I was sort of a pioneer, and I had podcasts up there with iWeb, and if I tell people this, I think they're going to be shocked. So my kids would produce anywhere between 500 to 1,000 podcasts a week, very productive, and they would all comment on them, and I, in iWeb, there was no feature to um, watch the, what they posted before it was posted. And so I would have to go on and look and see about the comments. And my kids did very well. I mean, you know, um, we didn't have any issues. So now, you know, there's a lot of gatekeepers on that. Um, my girlfriend, Brenda Mensch, she teaches K3 music, and her kids all comment on blogs. They create stuff in Audioboo. She uses Audioboo, and she creates stuff in Audioboo, and the kids all comment and do little things um, for, for that. So, I mean, I think in music, we have to reflect. If we don't reflect how we play, then we don't improve because part of practicing is practicing by ourselves. And if we don't hear the mistakes, how do we improve? So, you know, I just actually wrote a big post about how don't put, you know, music in the classroom because I'll be listening to music and I won't be doing my work. But, um, you know, that's one of the factors that we have in music. We all know that as musicians and artists, we all want to improve, so we're always very critical of what we see and what we hear. So. All right. Well, we are nearing our two o'clock hour. Is there any? Uh, you guys, any final questions, thoughts? Did you want to throw something out to Carol as well? It's up to you. Carol, have you done anything with QR codes? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, um, I got QR. I have QR codes. Um, I, the, my latest one is putting actually a drawing in a QR code. How cool is that? So you take your drawing. Of course, it was myself. Um, a drawing. Well, it's all about me. Come on. Um, well, you know, you have to. That's how you start. You know, that's how you break out. The art teacher knows that. Um, so, yeah, the QR codes with that. I think, um, like I said, my girlfriend Brenda, she had it for open house, and she had the QR codes all around the room. And so when the parents came to open house, they could go to where the kids did their recording, and then they would take up their thing, and then they could listen to their the kids' recording right as part of open house. So, um, awesome. yeah, yeah uh, there's a really neat one-to-one. Uh, -one. There's a neat one-to-one -one in Gurney, Illinois, and they use QR codes throughout the whole school. All of their projects are all QR codes. So all the bulletin boards are just QR codes. So the kids can go up to a bulletin board. They can read anything they want. Very cool. So, I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? The whole school internet. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, that is awesome. Well, thank you, we got a lot of ideas here that we need to like divvy up and, and figure out. But um, um, where can people find your stuff, and where can they find you online, and what's all okay. that good information? Um, it's a long story. I'm Music Techie on Twitter, 
And um, everything else on the online on Beatechi. It's a long story, but that's just what it is. Um, and then I have my blog is beatechi.com, B-E-A-T-E-C-H-I-E. And then all of my stuff for presentations and all my stuff about iPads and everything is on the carolbros.com site. So um, it's C-A-R-O-L-B-R-O-O-S. And I have a whole thing. Like I said, I just put the thing about free apps my, and the iPad presentations and then a lot of the stuff that I created right on the iPad so people can see. And like I said, they're super short. You know, and some of them are like 14 seconds long. Mm -hmm. So, because um, I think not, that's what that's the power. That's not to forget. You are also uh, you have a really good podcast, which I keep hearing good things about. Uh, <laughs> right. On, on Ed Reach. So if you go to yes. edreach.us slash Arts Roundtable, uh, we can hear you and Trisha and Brenda and Jennifer. Right. Um, uh, talk about music and art, and you can do yeah, it on your way to work. We had a real geeky one out about two weeks ago about singing monsters, which is like a gamer. We all turned into gamers over this new app. Oh, yeah. So and uh, it's sort of funny. Yeah, but that's part of that's part of the whole thing, you know. You got you got to have a little bit of fun, don't you? Absolutely. Well, thanks again. Thanks, um, Carol. Thanks oh yeah, hey. I love it. <laughs> and we will uh, we'll catch you uh, catch you later. Yeah. Thanks.